Hi, everybody. Tom Van Hoy with Pitt State men and women's cross-country coach Russ Jewett. All fall sports are underway at PSU. Cross-country at the Missouri Southern Stampede in Joplin Saturday morning. Later in the year, Pitt State hosting the MIAA Championships on October 26. Russ Jewett is the head coach of both men and women's cross-country teams. How about 27th year with the women? 24 the men. The women have won eight MIAA Championships. Pick preseason number three this year. There are 11 women's teams in the MIAA. Men, preseason number seven of nine teams. Coach Jewett on the PSU women's team this year. Well, it's it's a pretty typical for us blend of youth and experience that um, the coach makes a coach happy. I think you you want to have that experience. <clears throat> excuse me to to carry you through any tough times, and you have that youth to ensure the future. I think we've got a pretty good blend of both. We've got. Uh, a pretty good front runner and uh, decent depth, I think. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully that'll bode well for us when it really counts in a few weeks. You know, when you take a take a look at it, and sometimes in, in other sports, you look at uh, freshmen coming in and and how they develop uh, over the course uh, of the years. In cross country, is that the way it is too? Because I would imagine as a freshman coming in, you, you've run a lot, but the, the experience and obviously the uh, physical maturity later on. It is similar, um, a little different in matter of degree. The men, for instance, the guys run 5K in high school, their, their event changes, their sport changes. They go up to 8K or 10K, so up to double the race distance. The girls don't. You know, usually they race 5K in high school and, and go up to 6K, so it's not as dramatic an adjustment. So sometimes you see girls maybe make that adjustment athletically a little quicker than the boys, but all of them have to adapt to being away from home and all the things that any freshman has to, so it's similar. I would think that uh, from a conditioning standpoint that on the men and women's side, they they both uh, have to come in prepared immediately. And if they don't, it just doesn't work that first year very well at all. Yeah, because you literally hit the ground running when you show up here. They they need to have come in with a big base of fitness from the summer. And uh, and usually they do. These distance runners are typically are very self-motivated and do a great job. Sometimes we have to keep them from running too much, in fact. Mm-hmm. Do you have a program that you want them to follow before they come in at the beginning of the year? Yeah, the NCAA prohibits us from being in contact with them about their training during the summer, but we certainly can give them voluntary training, which we do. Um, and it's more of a guide than a day-by-day thing. But uh, more than that, well, in addition to that, we, we kind of let them know how it's going to be when they come in. So certainly they they need to avoid injury by getting the job done in the summer, and, and they do a good job in general. Can it be eye-opening when they start the workouts when they get to college? Almost always is to some degree or other. Um, even if they do their job in the summer, they come in and they're around other runners who were the best runner at their school like, like they were. So it's just a whole different animal. And sometimes their, their easy runs uh, when they were in high school um, are a lot slower than their easy runs here at the college level. And that's that in addition to just running more miles and the hard workouts are harder uh, those are the big adjustments athletically that some of these kids have to make. Tom Van Oy visiting today with Russ Jewett. Uh, among the many things, uh, women and men's cross-country head coach getting set to open up here just before too long. C- can you give us uh, an indication of what a normal workout week would, would be for one of your runners? Sure, I can give you a sort of a slice in the life of a of a distance runner this time of year. I would start with a Monday. We would have a hard workout on Monday, maybe for the guys, maybe six times a mile. Total total miles for that day might be 11. The next morning they come and they run five or six miles in the morning. In the afternoon they run probably 10 miles easy. This is on the upper end of things. Wednesday we would have a, a fast continuous run, maybe maybe six miles fast and a total of 10 miles. Thursday's like Tuesday. Friday would probably be an easy day. Saturday would be a race and Sunday would be a long run. Some of them go as much as 18 or 20 miles on their long run. So, you know, some of our guys get up to 90 to 100 miles a week. Uh, some of the girls really? get up to 70 miles a week sometimes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, when you look at that, has it changed over the years? You've done it for, for a long time in terms of preparation in high school before you get to college. Because, you know, back in the day, and I, I don't know what's you know, the Eisenhower administration or whatever, but you'd run a few miles and then you'd get ready for cross country. But, I mean, the physical fitness to be able to do what you just said to me is amazing. 
Yeah, and I think I think you'll see uh, some differences among programs. That some schools, a uh, coach might feel like they just need to keep enough kids on the team. To, they don't work tremendously hard. In other schools where they have a ton of kids, they might be able to work harder. And so you really do see some variance there. So it really it doesn't depend so much on the era in which these kids came out in, but more in, in their situation at their local school. Has it changed much uh, from your perspective? as a head coach in terms of uh, what you ask of them to do? Oh, not really, Tom. I, I, we, you know, it's always required a lot of hard work. Now, maybe what might have changed, I've been told, Tom, is how I ask it. <laughs> that okay. probably has been well. one. It used, used <laughs> to be uh, you know, a little more uh, narrow path that they were allowed to travel in terms of, you know, work ethic and deviating from our philosophies and things like that. But, I mean, there's a little more give and take. Uh, um, kids these days, uh, it, it's, you know, the globe is flat, as they say, and there's a lot of information out there, and, and kids are smart, and, and they're mature, and so we certainly include them in the whole process. Uh, we all follow one program, but there's some input from the student-athletes without question. Well, you know, as I look at cross-country, too, and, and later on when we do this, we'll talk about track and field, but... How much of this is innate or genetic? I mean, either you can run or you can't sometimes, right? Well, yeah. I mean, everybody's got a, a God-given or parent-given potential. Certainly, that's your talent. That's, I just call that your talent, um, an undeveloped potential, if you will. And that is different among some folks. Um, but what we get at, we can't do anything about that. You've already been born. God's already given you what you got. But we certainly want to make the most of that. And that's a little different for for one kid versus another sometimes based on what their strengths are. Through the freshman year, we really try to figure out um, what their strengths are, and we train them to their strength as much as we can within the philosophy of the program. But it, it, it just, I mean, the work ethic is by far the most important thing. All right, so from a recruiting standpoint, you don't even have to leave the office, do you? You can just take a look at that list and say, all right, this guy can run 10K. I mean, well, if <laughs> it's I not quite that simple. If I don't have to leave the office, I should have gone anywhere yeah. last night, I guess. But <laughs> Well, it's easier than some sports, sure, because the time is a time. Um, but there are lots of intangibles when you recruit that you want to want to find out about too that uh, involve a lot of research. You have any uh, Jeanette Mott types on your uh, your team this year? Oh, Jeanette was one of a kind, so no. But yeah. Do we have someone near that talent level? Possibly. Um, we, we have a young lady named Jessica Macy who transferred to us from DePaul University had to sit out last year to do a residency and was a good runner when she came, but I think she really thrives in our environment. And she's become, now she hasn't done much in terms of wearing our uniform and, you know, making a big splash, but her training has been very good, similar to what a Jeanette Mott could do, maybe maybe in the same zip code as Jeanette, certainly. Well, I, just, I bring that up because she's going into the Hall of Fame. And, yeah. Jeanette Mott Owens now, by the way, 98 through 2002. And I know you've had great... Uh, runners there at Pitt State, but man, when you look at her, 2002 Steeple State National Champion, second 5,000 meters, and I can go on and on, but on top of that, and I know this is important for you as well, but not only have you had good uh, athletic uh, folks in your program, but also on the academic side as well. Yeah, and we're, we're very proud of that. I, we can't take a lot of credit for that. I think in our sport, sort of attracts good students as athletes, in, in cross country particularly. Um, but we certainly uh, stay out of their way, and I think uh, Dan Wilkes and, and others here do a good job of, of promoting those student athletes and bragging about them in the right circle so they get accolades. But Jeanette was uh, a gem. She was <laughs> you know, a coach's dream because she was so easy to coach. In fact, she was sort of a coach herself for last year or two, so she was uh, one of a kind. Talk about the women's team a little bit more in depth. You return with five of the top seven and preseason number three in the MIAA. So it looks like you got a chance to maybe make a run this year, huh? Yeah, yeah. Last year we were, because of an injury or two, we were sort of missing a front runner. You know, our girls did a great job, and they did really about all they could. Um, this year, hopefully, we've got a couple of girls that can, can finish higher in races, and that really helps you when it comes to conference, especially regionals and nationals, should we get there. A little different team this year. We still have experience, but um, we've got some youth, too, and, um, and, and so I'm really excited about this season. How about we talked a little bit about recruiting and jokingly a little bit of my part about just you know look at the times. That's about all you have to do, but are there specific uh, areas you, you like to recruit? And I know the contiguous uh, county 
situation has helped you out, I would think helped you out a little bit anyway. Oh, no question. Anywhere where we can get an in-state tuition rate and attract a, a young woman or young man to the university, that's that's our priority. But with the, the expanded Gorilla Edge program now, where you have 150% of the tuition rate for, for in-state, you can go all the way to Texas. And we've we've gone to Texas, and, and we, we've got a few kids from there, uh, not necessarily cross-country runners yet, but uh, I think that'll come, too, in all of Missouri. So our scope is basically uh, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and and Texas now. How about on the men's side? I know but preseason uh, number seven this year. You return six of seven, though, and you get another young man back, don't you? Yeah, Adam Volkert redshirted last year. Um, Probably could have raced him last year, but we knew that with the rest of his crew around him, didn't have a great chance at winning a conference championship. But and he had a fifth year of school, so he's perfectly healthy now. Um, had a couple of, of challenges to overcome in the summertime, but he's doing really well now. And and we returned most of the other guys from from a squad that uh, struggled with injury last year, but but really uh, fought hard anyway. And um, I certainly think we're a little better even even right now than seventh, but uh, we still have something to prove in terms of. You know, winning a conference title—that's for certain. But this is a, this is a very close team. It's the, some of the best team chemistry I've had in a while, and, and that means a lot in this sport in terms of everybody working together and working as hard as you can and finding your limits. How about the quality of competition, men and women in the MIAA? It's very good. It's not the toughest conference in the country. That's probably the RMAC, Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference, with you know Adam State and Western State, those altitude schools, but. Um, it, it is extremely t- as deep as what it is. Uh, there are only a couple of schools on the women's side that you could say probably don't have a chance to win a title, and maybe you could say the same on the men. So there may not be a national champion team in our conference, but it is very deep and tough. How, how often does it uh, occur that you get a chance to host the MIAA championships, which you do this year? Well, it's a rotation, Tom. So each school uh, has the opportunity to host in a in a rotation situation, and sometimes a school will decline their turn for different reasons. Um, the last time we hosted was 2005, so I guess eight years is, has been the gap at this point in time. It might be more for the next time because we've added teams since then. I haven't seen you for a, for a couple of years, but you still have the same office? I, you know, I've been here for however many years you counted them, I guess. I probably had, I'm in my maybe sixth different office in this building. So I'm in Coach Muff's old office. It's a little bigger than my old one. And when he moved out into his new digs over there, I decided I wanted to pull rank and get a bigger office. <laughs> That's what I well, you kept tripping over all those uh, 29 <laughs> MIAA Coach of the Year trophies you have. Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, you know, you have done a lot and you have been successful and, and you do a great job of the, kind of deflecting that. But it's probably hard for one moment, but is there anything over the course of those years that, that sticks out more than anything, what, what you guys have accomplished there? Well, they're all so special. I and mean, every kid that comes through our program that commits themselves um, leave here and give me great memories, and I appreciate all those. Uh, you know, I, I really can't pull one out. I, th- I yeah. think I, I remember early, early in the MIAA. You know, I think sometimes in your career you remember the very beginning a little more, and maybe you remember the end a little more. And I just remember those early days in the MIAA. We, we had some teams that uh, maybe had no business winning conference championships. We'd come from the NAI where we were used to winning, come up a level, and we just didn't know any better, so we just went out and win. And, and other folks kind of scratched their heads. So I, I guess I have. Unique memories, not any more special necessarily. Unique memories maybe of the first couple of years, 89 and 90, I guess, spring of 90, um, and, and some of our women's t- teams back then, back in the Christy Allen era, as I call it, uh, were, were awfully special for cross country as well. But they're all great, you know. They're, they're all great. They all give me great memories. All right, we'll wrap it up. But John, I'm sure you remember 1982, right, when you finished second in the NAI at door <laughs> as a decathlete. And people may not know that, but uh, I wanted to let them know. But what I wanted to ask you, though, is do you remember how many points you scored and do you remember what your times were and how they would compare to today? Oh, yeah. We, we uh, <laughs> decathletes, remember all the points and the times. And, uh, you know, I, I'd get my tail kicked by these kids today. They're, they're – uh, they're just uh, awfully good athletes these days. That's Pitt State men and women's cross country coach Russ Jewett. Again, in Joplin, Saturday morning, Missouri Southern Stampede there. We'll hear from Coach Jewett each week during the cross country season and again during track and field. Also head coach at Pitt State for both programs as well. Coach Jewett, 29 time MIAA Coach of the Year in cross country and track and field, more than any one coach in MIAA history. And, oh, by the way, Coach Jewett, also Senior Associate Athletic Director at Pitt State. I'm Tom Van Hoy. I'm Tom Van Hoy. I'm Tom Van Hoy.